I call the meeting to order and thank everyone for their attendance. It's been a uh, good while since we've been together, and it's, it's good to have everyone back. Before we begin the meeting, I would like to just, you know, uh, make a statement, if I may. <coughs> and uh, I just want to take a minute to let you know face-to-face -face, uh, how seriously I take the recent allegations against me. Uh, the process of going through each individual vote has begun, but I need time to respond factually. In the meantime, please know I would never do anything to intentionally harm or embarrass the City of Virginia Beach or Town Bank. I have been consistent protector of both and have always had the best interest of both at heart. Um, we cannot let this issue stand in the way of taking care of important city business. We owe that to our citizens, and I'd appreciate your understanding and I will get on along with the agenda now, if that's okay. Thank you. Mr. Spohr, our first uh, is business is apartment development. Jack Whitney, council, if you recall, we I think we as a body suggested Mr. Spohr get some information on apartments because we've been uh, having a lot of rezonings for apartments and we're wondering how much demand is out there <coughs> and uh, if that's going to continue. Uh, so Mr. Spohr, I'll turn it over to you. I, I think you just covered the introduction very well, Mayor. This was in response. I thought I had my recollection was right. Uh, the council had asked some uh, great questions about uh, what's the nature of the market and are we overbuilding for apartments. And so uh, Jack is here to introduce this item and got an excellent presentation. Jack, we welcome you. Mayor, thank you. Members of council, pleasure to be here. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, uh, at a recent glimpse of planning items to come, uh, the mayor had observed that there appeared to be an uptick in apartment development in Virginia Beach and wondered, was that an anomaly? Was it a trend? What was going on? How do we compare with other communities at the regional level, state, and national level? A, a great observation, and uh, that is the purpose of this briefing this afternoon. Uh, what we have done uh, is prepared with the help of uh, ARA Real Estate Investment Services, extensive experience uh, on these matters, and uh, that will be the content of the presentation you're about to hear. I'd also like to uh, thank R.J. Nutter from Troutman Sanders for uh, his help in uh, assisting the facilitation of this presentation. I think you will find it interesting, uh, informative, and maybe a bit provocative which is all a good thing. So with that said, let me introduce Drew White from ARA, uh, who's going to give you a very, very intriguing and interesting presentation. Drew? Drew, we welcome you. Thank you. Mayor, esteemed council, colleagues, um, my name is Drew White. I'm with a company called Apartment Realty Advisors. We are a National firm, what we do is we sell apartment complexes. We've been uh, the largest broker of apartment complexes here in the region, which I'll get into in just a second. But, but we were brought in because we don't work for a company. We work for all the companies. And so we don't have a necessary you know, uh, dog in this hunt, so to speak. We are just neutral observers, uh, both within this market and throughout the whole Mid-Atlantic, uh, as to the trends and trades um, of the apartment business. And we've been asked to take a look as to what that means to Virginia Beach. Uh, the best thing that I can do for you is to show you the data. Uh, we can interpret it together to mean whatever it may be, but uh, I'm a personal uh, numbers guy, and I like what I can quantify and count and rely on versus just objectify. So with uh, that being said, I'll kind of get into uh, to the meat of it, to... Uh, tell you not to dwell on, on who we are, but to establish some credibility. Our company is called Apartment Realty Advisors. Once again, we are the second largest apartment brokerage firm in the nation and the largest privately held um, apartment brokerage firm as well. Uh, there's 110 of us across the country. I myself, as well as uh, two other partners, own the Mid-Atlantic which means we control Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Richmond, and the Hampton Roads area, as well as all parts from Charlottesville West. Uh, where we have offices across the country is here, and I'm over the uh, blue ones that are, that are highlighted. To uh, tell you a little bit about the things that we've done here, just to say, okay, these guys get it, they know what they're doing. We currently have this Indigo 19 in Virginia Beach under contract. 
We've sold numerous projects throughout the region, accounting for more than a, more than a, a billion dollars. Here are some of the ones that are more recent that are highlighted. Another uh, Virginia Beach asset, Banyan Grove, that was built by the Sandlers and Wood Partners. Uh, the Berkshire portfolio, this is all up on the peninsula, but we just sold it. It was $85 million. Um, Greenwich Village, uh, one that's uh, been around forever that you all, all probably know, the Mayflower. We sold it twice to the current owner and then to the guys before like that to do as that, well. Don't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, uh, it's amazing. We actually have some black and white photos of that property from probably the 60s. And it's literally one building that's more than three or so stories, and that's it. And uh, it's just an impressive photo. It, it's in a black and white. We also sold the uh, Great Atlantic Portfolio, which, uh, which was uh, Edwin Joseph's uh, assets. It was over 300 million and 25 assets total. So that's who we are. That's what we do. Here is the map of everything that we've worked on in this area. So with that being said, that's us. Uh, we've been brought in today, and the best thing to kind of pull off of would be this proposed objectives page right here, which is in front of, I think, each of you, hopefully. Uh, these are the questions that we've been asked to address today uh, to help kind of quantify um, us versus other regions within or, or other uh, counties within the MSA as well as us against, say, other, other cities. Uh, I personally have had the pleasure or misfortune of selling properties in 10 different states throughout the southeast. And so, uh, and it's been in 18 different major markets. A major market not being Virginia Beach is one and Norfolk is two, but Hampton Roads is one, D.C. is two, Charlotte is three, et cetera. So um, we've, we've uh, gotten a chance to see, you know, kind of how you all stack up against other southeast markets. I've been asked to compare this to, say, Richmond as our, our, our nearest similar size <laughs> asset uh, or market to the north. So the uh, first question we were asked to, uh, to address is a population comparison. This is question one uh, on the handout. What we did was we took a look back to uh, 2000 to 2010 and said, here's the growth for both Hampton Roads at 5.87% and Richmond at 14 and a third, roughly. But then we said, all right, that's then, this is now. What about the more recent? It's been about 2.3 versus 3.8. Uh, the current and the future, looking forward. Uh, us versus Richmond. Uh, we're looking to, to grow at around 2.5%. They are at about a 3.4%. I'm going to be ripping through a lot of this analytical data just to give us more time to be able to focus on some of the meat of the matter. Uh, on question three, the occupancy and or vacancy rates in, uh, in, in each market. Well, this is the inventory before getting on to that. Uh, this is a city of roughly 90, 95,000 units. Richmond, and it's roughly a 1.6, 1.7 million person MSA, uh, depending on how big you draw the circle. Richmond itself is roughly a 1.2 million person MSA, and they've got about 70, uh, 75,000 units. So that's the basis for our comparison here. When you look at the vacancy rates, what's been happening to the whole MSA, all of Hampton Roads total, between 09, when things got really bad, and the current, as you'll see the uh, trend, Richmond is dropping, but so is Hampton Roads. We are right around a healthy 6% vacancy right now. When you look at ways to quantify the health of a market, you look at two things, two, two variables which you can quantify, all right? One is vacancy. You know, do I have enough people to fill this, enough heads in the beds? The other is the amount of rent that I can charge for. It's all supply and demand. This is the inventory that we have within this market. Uh, one thing that, uh, that a Hampton Roads has that, say, other MSAs don't have is a much, much older product stock. And having done work in Richmond, D.C., Charlotte, Greensboro, Triangle Triad, Atlanta, Columbia, Charlotte, I mean, uh, Charleston, uh, et cetera, this number right here, the large amount or large percentage of units that are older is higher here than almost any other MSA throughout the country. If you were to look at, say, a triangle or a triad asset in North Carolina, this looks even less than that. There's a lot more between new, one to five years of age, and six to 15 years of age. And so I ask you not to draw your attention to, wow, we have a lot of older properties, but, but more so to the, we've got a similar number 
to what Richmond has in terms of the new product stock, and yet we're about 50% bigger. They're 1.2 million, we're 1.7-ish or so. 1.6, 1.7% uh, or million. So from looking at that, we then switch over to historical rent trends. How have we grown over time? This is a true you know, mark of, of the health. You know, can I push rents? Can I get more dollars year after year? If I build too many, what happens? I've got too much supply, and then my rent levels can't grow because my occupancy rises. This is just one measure of it. It's how the whole market has grown over time compared to Richmond. And then this kind of breaks it down also. How does the new stuff compare to the old stuff? This is in lease up. This is one to five years of age, six to 15 years of age, et cetera. So you will see that there is a differentiation between, between new stuff being built and older properties. As we fast forward to, to uh, you know, tell me about, about the inventory. What we did now was we began to break down kind of the higher growth areas within the MSA. Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, Norfolk. This is that same kind of graph as this that shows the rents between brand new, pretty new, a little bit aged, and older by, by cities. Blue is Virginia Beach, red is Chesapeake, purple is Norfolk. If you look at the percentages of, say, new properties or newer properties, um, we are somewhat right in line with Chesapeake and Norfolk. But when you look at it relative to the larger product stock that we have, it's a much, much smaller percentage. These are the rents for those exact same areas. Again, um, Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, Norfolk. And what you'll see is you'll see lease up. These are the brand new properties that are between zero and 90 or so percent occupied. These are the ones that have been around for the last one to five years, six to 15, and then older, et cetera. What you'll see here is, is a strange anomaly. Well, wait a minute. So if I'm building brand new apartments, why am I not getting more rent? Well, the way that this works is that when you're leasing up apartments, you give concessions, you give incentives for people to say, not move into the one down the street that might be five or six or whatever years old, move to me. They will actually concess or discount their rents as they go through lease up, only to then raise the rents to be even higher than what you have here. This is where they start, they finish somewhere up here so that there is a gap over, over the older. What you'll see is you'll see higher ceilings and granite and stainless steel uh, appliances, all of the new bells and whistles, big sexy clubhouses, and lots of amenities for people to do. That's kind of what you get with the newer apartments. Moving on to, to how many units have been approved within Hampton Roads versus, versus uh, Richmond, here's the trend. Blue is Hampton Roads, red is Richmond. This is year over year from July through current, you'll see that, that Richmond, a smaller market, has about 4,000 units. The greater MSA within Hampton Roads has about 3,100. When you look at it for the city of Virginia Beach versus Chesapeake versus Norfolk, you'll see massive, massive growth within Chesapeake and Norfolk, and Virginia Beach relative to it, and it's a much larger city, uh, has substantial growth but a lot less than what you would think relative to where, to where this has been and to where Chesapeake and Norfolk have received uh, a, lot of, a lot of growth. The next slide is a somewhat of a telling one, and I'm on uh, objective number eight. This is average rents and sale prices of apartment complexes in Virginia Beach, Norfolk, and Chesapeake. What you'll see here is these are the average rents. And what you'll see over here is these are the average prices that these assets ultimately sell for. Uh, it's my job to go out and to sell these properties. We sell A properties, B properties, C properties, D properties. Seniors, students, affordable, all of the above. And so when you look at this, uh, we have sold most of the ones here in Virginia Beach, most of the ones in Chesapeake. The one that you don't see here is in Norfolk 
because we were asked to go back three to four years. The last property to sell there was the property down by the uh, painted lady that's called the Bristol at Ghent, uh, now known as the Alexander at Ghent. We sold that too. But that was for $180,000 per unit, but it was just outside the point of reference that we were asked to kind of ex uh, uh, explore today. So this is what they rent for. This is what they sell for. If you look at, say, Virginia Beach, despite the fact that our rents on the Class A's are less than the other municipalities, <laughs> the investor community, the pension fund advisors, the REITs, the, the foreign investors that we've been able to bring to this area value this market and pay more for it than the other markets in terms of a price and return. This is the Hampton Roads deliveries and absorptions. Okay, What you have here is is how many did we build, that's the blue, and then how many did we digest or absorb, that's the yellow. Recently, you've seen a pretty big overhang. You mentioned earlier that, that you have a lot of applications. That looks and feels a lot like this, this kind of uptick right here. When you look at the imbalance that's right in through here, it looks like it's probably, call this 2,700 and call this... 1700, about, about 1,000 units kind of overrun. And that is on, and just to apply numbers to it, that is on a sample set of roughly 100,000 units. Okay, Hampton Roads is about call it, 95 to 100,000 units. So this 1% kind of overhang would equate to roughly a 1% vacancy. I add 1,000 to 100,000, it's 1%, right? Um, that then begins to, in 2015, with all things being equal, we're going to capture part of that back. In 2016, we're going to level it out again, and then, then we're going to have a slight spread to absorption versus completion. These things don't take 15 minutes. These things take uh, you know, years of planning and construction and building, and then, and then lease up. This is not a you know, five-minute drill here. This is you know, a two- to three-year process to get from from I have a piece of land to get an apartment complex on it. And then if it's a 300 unit complex per se, at roughly 20 units per month, that's a 15 month lease up. So this process drags on for three to four years. I would not be worried about, worried about a thousand unit overhang right here. Um, I live in Northern Virginia, Leesburg. I work all over Washington DC too. You want to talk about problems, Washington, D.C. has that problem. They've got a base of roughly 600,000 units, and the overhang there is about 36,000 units. Looks and feels like 6%. Now, that's over a three-year period, too. So that is, that is uh, a quite unhealthy imbalance. And what you're seeing there is you're seeing rents not growing. They're stagnating. Um, you're seeing occupancies uh, lower and vacancies rise. It, uh, the investor community, when they look at Washington, D.C. right now, is not underwriting rent growth. They're underwriting flat rents. And so uh, it's having an effect on value in the D.C. market. When you look at the Virginia Beach uh, deliveries and absorptions, it's a very, very similar kind of graph to what you've seen for overall Hampton Roads. Just about the same kind of shape here. Um, but then one of the biggest questions, and I've, and I've moved down to objective 10 on our sheet here. We were asked uh, to kind of go through this. I've ripped through the first nine points here because it's all just data. The last three questions were the ones that we were asked to kind of spend some more time on uh, because they actually mean something. As it pertains to can I build or, or allow to be built too many apartment complexes? Again, let's refer back to how do we measure this? We measure it with occupancies. Am I robbing Peter to pay Paul? If I allow all these new properties to be built, am I going to be leaving the B and the C and the older properties in the dust? Well, the only way like, to measure that is, is either in occupancies and then and or rents, right? Now, here's, you know, if... If I'm going to concess my rent so much for the Class A that it ripples down into the B properties and then the C properties, how do I measure it? 
It's through occupancies and through rents. When you look at the blue line and the orange line, this is blue is Hampton Roads, Class A, newer stuff. The orange line is Hampton Roads, Class B. Virginia Beach is the green line, Class A, and then Class B and C, the older product stock, is the purple line. So to answer your question about, you saw the 2014 large kind of jump in deliveries. What's happening? You know, are we, is it, is it falling out of the older properties? Not really, because if you look at it, within Virginia Beach proper, between 2013 and 2014, the, the vacancy rate for bees went up 0.1%, from 4.24 to 4.34. Not that big of a blip. In the Class A, it, it went from roughly 5% to 5.37. We're not robbing Peter to pay Paul. It's pretty much just as healthy. And then when you look at it, okay, let's look at it a different way. How about for everything, what about those, those same similar charts that we saw before for the new and the kind of new and the 6 to 15 year old? Tell me about that, Drew. Well, this is the new. The blue is roughly the newer properties. These are one to five years of age. These are already delivered. We can't really count the ones that are in lease up because they could be 0% occupied. They could have just delivered. But the ones that have just now delivered, that's the blue line. The 6 to 15 year old, and again, this is 09, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, um, looks to be relatively constant. And then when you get down to the ones that are, that are 16 to, uh, to a 30 years of age, they're actually dropping, as are the ones that are 30 plus years old, the much, much older ones that are out there for, for people to live in, which tend to be the, the least expensive. So the ones that are newer are actually somewhat stagnating, this blue line here. The ones that are older are actually getting tighter. Um, one thing to kind of think about is, is you know, why? Why is that? Um, you know the population growth figures better than I ever will. Um, but what we were able to, to, to kind of digest is that the household growth between 2000 and 2014 was an 11% growth, whereas the multifamily growth over that same time frame for all of Hampton Roads was 18%. What you're going to find kind of right now is, is leading into uh, intrinsic growth. It's, it's not necessarily uh, going to be, you know, are we, are we having to find more job growth here, more household formations? What is it exactly? It's more so of the, um, look at the, uh, at the demographic trends. Uh, the largest high school class to ever enter into high school is now getting out of college. What's going to happen? They're going to get out of college and then, and then go enter into the workforce. What are they going to do? Are they going to buy homes or are they going to rent? They're going to rent. They want the flexibility of being able to move around and to also not commit to one certain area. You're going to have that going into the... Um, uh, into the, uh, the overall flow, and you're also going to have people moving out of their parents' basements. Furthermore, the last variable that, that you may uh, encounter is the roommate situation. As roommates begin to, uh, to uh, uh, get better jobs, their second job out of college, their third job out of college, they do one of two things. They either get their own place or they get married. So one kind of giveth and one kind of taketh away. But that's just what happens at that stage in your second to third job as you enter into your, call it mid to late 20s to early 30s. Uh, another question that I was asked to answer is what factors have led to new apartment proposals and do you anticipate those factors continuing to be present for the next five years? When you look at the slides that I showed you, and you recognize there was this one pie chart on the right-hand side that showed how many older properties, how many older product stock do we have uh, relative to the whole. It was substantial, a lot more than pretty much most other Middle Eastern, um, sorry, southeastern cities. Um, <laughs> no, and so there's a, uh, there is a pent-up demand. I mean, you know, if I build it, will they come? Well, I am building it, and they are coming, right? Um, the other topic is that, you know, is that 
we just commented on this. There's a growing population of available renters. There's more people entering into the, the renter demographic. Um, during the uh, downturn, we got to a, uh, a horrible trade imbalance of roughly 67% of the country owned homes. Typically, that's between 62 and 64 percent. That balance of the of the available cheap money and the and the no money down loans is what led to that. Okay, people are fleeing from that left and right, and it's and it's it's approaching back to the more I want the freedom, I want to be able to, like, to move wherever I want, and in many cases, the rent versus buy makes more sense than the buy versus rent. That's what's also leading these people to get into a a, a renting situation. And then lastly, you know, why do they do it? Because it makes them money. Um, I mean, these are very, very um, uh, needed commodities, and the, the developers that are out there are able to, to go out, and even though they're getting rents that are comparable to stuff that's older, they're able to, to finance them and make a profit off of it. That's, that's why they do it. When you look at, lastly, uh, Virginia Beach, relative to everyone else in terms of the, you know, are we healthy enough? Should we allow more? What's going to happen if, just take a look at the basic metrics uh, here. When you look at, this is all the counties here, all the cities, and Virginia Beach has, when you look at it, the largest concentration within Virginia Beach of any municipality. Yeah. <laughs> Add the 8,000 to the 6,000 to the 10,000, we've got 24,000, that's that's you know, called 40% larger than Norfolk, over twice the size of Chesapeake. And you look at the things that we can measure to say, am I healthy? What's my temperature here? Our occupancy. We have the lowest vacancy out of almost all of the municipalities. Granted, I'm comparing myself to Williamsburg here, but they've got less than 4,000 units. I've got six times that amount. You build one new project and this number changes. Okay, so relative to everyone else, this is how tight <coughs> my market is. So then, looking at it from the other direction, what is someone willing to pay for that? We also have consistently some of the highest rents in the entire MSA. That's how you can measure an apartment uh, effectiveness, how occupied I am and how much can I charge for it. So relative to everywhere else in terms of the of the, you know, am I healthy enough to allow more apartments to be built? Seemingly, we're already healthier than everyone else is right now. Uh, in conclusion, I've, I've gone through a lot of this, but these, these conclusions here you'll find in the packets that are on your, uh, on your desk right now. You know, we've got a lot of older apartments but it's a lot of older apartments relative to, to everything else that we have. Um, our percentage, like I just mentioned, of, of new stuff relative to just how big we are is a lot smaller than Chesapeake, a lot smaller than Norfolk, and by the way, we're doing a lot better than they are. We're getting more rent and it's more healthy. We have lower vacancies. Um, our number of units that we have approved relative to the other ones which is on slide 17. <coughs> uh, which one is it? Looks like this. Where are the blue? Chesapeake and Norfolk are the red and the purple. It's all relative. Um, the completion of these new units and the absorption of them by renters is relatively balanced. This is the balanced part of it. We're going to be at a lull next year, equilibrium in 2016. For all these uh, classes of rents, we're not robbing one to kind of pay for the other, as you'll see in, in uh, uh, this slide right here that shows this is Hampton Roads, this is Virginia Beach. And so as we deliver more and more, now granted, this number right here of the blue line, this is actually growing. That number, like, like, like how many do we actually have as these deliver new, uh, uh, new this number is growing. The, the, the other classes obviously are not. But when you look at the, as I deliver more, what's happening to the middle market? What's happening to the more affordable units? They're actually doing better too. 
the occupancies for these older class, class B and, and C properties has not widened when new A product has been introduced. It's actually the other way around. And then lastly, Virginia Beach leads the area in effective rents. People pay the most to live here. And yet, once again, we're doing the best when you look at what our occupancies are. What kind of questions do we have? Great, great report. Shannon? I have two questions. Shoot. One is, are the um, income tax credit properties included in these averages that dollar amounts that you have? And then two, are you seeing any trend in those 30-year apartments of redeveloping and... and great question. Um, the, the, the apartments that are partially affordable like 80-20, uh, 60-40 deals, those are counted in, the, uh, in those totals. Uh, not the 100% Section 8, those are not counted. Uh, and then in terms of the, of the your second question is, a, is an excellent one. Um, what happens when a property is older and is not doing too well? There's a large property that just traded called Newsom Park uh, up on the peninsula. It was traded, it, it's roughly a a 630 some odd unit apartment complex and it traded for $6 million. Looks and feels like $10,000 per unit. You know, we're selling stuff over here like Indigo 19 for like $170,000 a unit. One of those units, or one of our units, 17 of theirs, okay? When you look at say the older product stock, what happens is when a property is becoming obsolete and just can't make it, their occupancies uh, rise. Their rents fall. It's what you have to do to encourage someone to live there. You know what? I have the best deal in town. Here's $500. You can live right here in this two-bedroom place. Um, they then beget, uh, they then become kind of, say, unhealthy, and then the then the owner is like, I need to get out of this. You know, I need to say, uh, infuse some new capital into this, and and either rehab it myself or sell it to someone who's going to rehab it themselves. When you look at, say, what the average B and C assets uh, sell for here, we've got several of them on the market right now. Uh, the Class A deals are trading for roughly, call it, uh, 160 or $70,000 per unit, and the average rents there are roughly, call it, $1,400, <clears throat> give or take. You can pick up a Class B asset, a Class C asset in this market for roughly $80,000 a unit. And guess what? The rents aren't less than half. They're more like $900, give or take. And so what happens is someone comes in and they say, you know what, there's a big gap between that 900 and that 1400 that I can kind of recapture by just me coming in, buying it, and then adding more money back into it, rehabbing it, making it better, taking it from a C property to, to a, a B property. There's a huge opportunity there. Like we sold... Ed Joseph's properties uh, all, you know, all over this whole MSA. It was over $300 million. And there's a lot of assets that were in that kind of opportunistic kind of play. You know, I can buy it for cheap or with bad debt on it and then just ride it out and then be able to add value to it. And so that's what typically happens. Opportunities there. You're seeing it happening. It's being healthy as far as that's concerned. Yeah, well, it's, it's any time that you can, you know, it's, it's what you buy uh, and what we sell is, is not really the sticks and the bricks, it's the income stream. And it's what you can make of that income stream. So if I can buy something for seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 and say add, pick a number, $10,000 worth of value to it with a new kitchen or a bath or a washer and dry connection, a new playground, a new clubhouse, what have you, make the whole neighborhood better, you know, rising tide lifts all boats there, you know, I'm going to be able to... Uh, to, to uh, make more money off of doing that, that execution, than I could be buying, buying a new Class A property. Those new Class A properties trade for right around uh, upper fives to low 6% cap rate, uh, if you're familiar with, with, with the term. Uh, the older B and C assets trade for roughly 65 to 7% cap rates. What you're able to do is you're able to go and buy those older class B and C assets for a low, low price per unit relative to replacement cost and go in there and add a little bit of money to them and then really raise the rents. You're going to make a lot more money off of buying B and C assets than you are off of A quality assets. Other questions or comments? Now you're going to convert your hotel stock apartment? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need hotel stock, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> well, it, that's 
very encouraging news. And sure. uh, uh, Council, I hope you all saw some benefit to this. This is something that... Well done. Uh, it, Thanks, it, was it was a great presentation, okay. and we certainly do. Any other questions or comments? We thank you so very, very much. My pleasure. Thank uh, you for having me. Council, I guess Jim will wait till 3 o'clock for yes, sir. Across Cro the Street. Across the Street. So we'll recess till 3 o'clock and um, see you across the street for the five-year always fun forecast. <laughs>